agenda, we're substituting 5E Exhibit A only resolution for a lease agreement with Johnson Diesel, adding 5J resolution continuing a state of emergency for Hurricane Zeta, and adding 5K a resolution continuing a state of emergency for COVID-19. Moved as amended. Right. We have a first by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gein. All in favor? 7-0. We'll now move to the presentation agenda. Mr. Gillich. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Attorney General, Mr. Susan, I want to read this. Whereas last year, the Gulf Coast Center for Nonviolence served the needs of 184 adult and child victims of sexual assault through rape crisis interventions at hospitals and individual and group counseling sessions. Whereas Current estimates suggest as few as one in five sexual assaults will be reported to law enforcement. Less than 3% of the reported will result in conviction and incarceration of the perpetrator. And reporting by victims are far more likely to occur to a friend or family member. Whereas the National Start by Believing public awareness campaign is designed to improve the responses of friends, family members, and community professionals so they can help victims to access, to access supportive resources and engage the criminal justice system. Whereas advocates, professionals, volunteers, and concerned community members will devote the month of April to raising public awareness of the crisis of sexual assault and encouraging people across our community to start by believing victims of sexual assault. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Fofo Gillich, Mayor of the City of Biloxi, Mississippi, in support of the victims of sexual violence and their needs for justice and healing, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2021 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. Give me a time to come out. If we can read another proclamation, invite some folks to come here. Come on. This proclamation. Oh, okay. This proclamation. Whereas Chris Greasus, a seven-year-old boy battling leukemia, wished to be a, a police officer. And on April 29, 1980, members of the Arizona Department of Public Safety and the community came together to grant him a wish. Chris's wish inspired the formation of a Make-A-Wish Foundation that grants life-changing wishes of children with critical illnesses. And, and since its founding, in 1984 has granted more than 2,330 wishes. Whereas research has shown that wishes can improve child's quality of life and produce a better health outcome. When a wish is granted, a child replaces fear with confidence, anxiety with hope, and sadness with joy. Now therefore, I, Andrew Fofo Gillich, Mayor of the City of Biloxi, Mississippi, in recognition of the anniversary of Chris's wish that inspired the founding of a Make-A-Wish and subsequent Make-A-Wish Mississippi. And the global wish granting in, uh, movement do hereby proclaim the 29th day of April 2021 as World Wish Day. Thank y'all very, very much. I want to tell you, uh, Danny, this is Danny Mitchell, and he was my Make-A-Wish child. I want to thank many of you because you co contributed to our campaign and made it happen for Danny. His mother and daddy, Mr. and Ms. Mitchell, please stand. I know you don't want to, but that's too bad. Stand. Okay. So we wanted to come and say thanks to you very, very much. You want to say anything? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. There you go. Okay, so I think that's about all I have to say, Mike. Is that? Uh...
pretty much other than this is our last meeting in April and on to May and, and better things that are going to happen for our city. Uh, that concludes my report. All right. Don't have any departmental reports. We'll now move to our council reports. We'll change it up a little bit and start on this side today. Mr. Glavin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, got a couple of things. Uh, the, the first one is uh, the Cedar Lake Bridge. Uh, I think we, it's well documented. We've, we've talked and discussed a, about it numerous times. Uh, it's a small bridge that we avoided uh, actually during emergencies because uh, the integrity of that bridge is uh, sort of in question. Um, had a conversation with uh, one of the senators and, and a couple of the representatives and um, they, they said if, if we can give them a plan, there, there could be some funding uh, that could be allocated toward that bridge. Um, when it floods on both sides, uh, it floods the road on both sides, so if we could increase the span a little bit, um, and if it, the bridge could be replaced, it would be safer and we can get those emergency vehicles uh, for Chief Boney um, across that bridge and maybe save lives. Um, so I would ask the administration, if it isn't on our capital list, to certainly add it to our capital list and uh, see if we can have a dialogue uh, with, with some of the people in the state that control some of that funding that it is might, on our might be useful. Left. There is a capital project. Uh, it is for uh, repairs to the bridge, not to a new bridge. Uh, it's uh, assigned, the contract is assigned to Thompson Engineering. We're just doing a mod to that, that contract. All that will do is design the electrical mechanical repairs that are needed to uh, inc increase the, uh, the bridge's uh, rating. Right now we can't take a fire truck across that bridge. But that doesn't solve the, the real problem. The real problem is a new bridge, a new high bridge. Okay. Um, so I guess my next question, I mean, it, would there be funds available, bridge funds or anything? That so what I, you know? what I see is happening, uh, Councilman, is that we'll run the traps through on this design. And then we'll uh, go ask MDOT for some funding to award the the repairs to the bridge. It's very similar to the, the kind of repairs that are going on in the Ocean Springs Fort Bayou Bridge right now. Very similar kind of a situation. Same kind of a bridge, same kind of repairs. Uh, and that would probably be done next year. Now, I think we're on, well, I think MDOT, that's 80-20 match money. So we would be looking for, we would be going back to MDOT in fiscal 22 for the match that we need. Uh, and that, if that all happens by the end of fiscal 22, we have a bridge that's uh, more reliable, but it's still a, a low bridge that has to open to let uh, marine traffic through and so forth, just like the Pops Ferry Bridge. So in both cases, the real solution is a, a new high, high bridge. And approach ways too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Uh, uh, again, I'll try to get more information. Okay. I know uh, Representative Yuri is going to get back to me on some, on some stuff. And if, if y'all already got some information, that's good. I'll just try to supplement anything that well, you have. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll send you an email with the, some details to share with him. Okay. So Appreciate that. I'd just like to add, it doesn't just affect my ward. I think it affects the entire city, but it, it, it also is a bridge uh, into Ward 7, you know, from Ward 6. So it, it's... It's a it's a major bridge. Mm -hmm. It really is, even though it's a little short one. It's it's mm -hmm. a major has some major, uh, you know, functions for the entire city. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, I had a uh, resident call me just before I got in here. Um, this uh, drainage ditch uh, I've brought to the attention several times. I don't think that's him calling, but uh, this is along uh, Pelican Bayou. Uh, in the Pelican Bayou subdivision, um, had a resident say during the heavy rain it overflowed and uh, we repaired a, a little bit of the sidewalk, I guess about a year ago, uh, and he said that part of the sidewalk is now kind of caving in due, due to the washout and everything, so if we could maybe get some eyes on it and, mm -hmm. and just t take a look at what, what may or may not be done. Um, I will say this, that area is draining better than in years past. Uh, however, this was a de deluge of, of rainfall that we experienced, uh, but it, it seems it did compromise some of the sidewalk mm -hmm. near that drainage area. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Gaines. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to thank the uh, mayor administration for meeting with me yesterday. Um, we ironed out a lot of problems, so I really appreciate that. And I would just like to catch up with Peter. I have a legal question to ask after the meeting. So thank you. That concludes my uh, comments. Thank you. Mr. Tisdale. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. President. Two things. Uh, Mr. Leonard, on Hampton Lane, I know we were, there's a, there's a drainage issue there. And I think they were, they may have already videoed the line, I'm not sure. I didn't see Billy Ray out here, but we don't have a timeline yet other than we were looking to video and maybe stitch a form that, that line, but there's no decision made at this point or a firm timeline or anything. I haven't had a conversation with, uh, with Billy Ray about it yet. I know they were trying to get a video done and decide whether they could replay, replace sections or right. whether we needed to do Stitch the old thing. The thing. Okay. The whole, it's a very large, what, 72 inch pipe? Yeah, it's a big one. So it'd be a big project. Okay, so so that's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the, the theory was video it, find out if we can do point repairs or we have to rip the whole thing out or can we stitch it for them and, the and then we'd have to come back with a project to the council to approve. Gotcha, okay. Um, the other thing is I'd like to thank the Biloxi Ocean Springs Junior Auxiliary. They um, placed a tiny library. It's, if you've heard of little libraries, they're primarily for children's books and public places. And the idea is you want a book, you take a book at no charge and replace it when you're done or put another children's book in there. So it's safe from the elements. But they, they put one out at uh, McManus Pennzoil Park and Miss Bell helped with that in Parks and Recreation. So I just wanted to thank them for that. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. Ms. Nemi? Yes, um, I understand with the rainstorm, many of streets were flooded, um, but Wilkes Avenue has been really bad for years. And I know that it's on the um, agenda for FEMA infrastructure, and we've been waiting for years and years. But I just beg and plead in the meantime, which I have been for years. But once again, I just want to ask that it's on rotation for drainage, um, cleaning out the drains, especially before a big storm is coming and whatever else we can possibly do to just give them some relief in the meantime. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, going back to what uh, Dixie was saying, you know, when they cleaned the street and they got the leaves off the street, like on Wilk and Crawfish, all the streets that flooded, drains handle the water. It's the leaves and the trash in the street, so we need to be prepared. So like a hurricane, they have somebody going out there sweeping the streets first, cleaning the leaves and everything up. And I tell you, the drains handle the water. When they get clogged up, then everybody floods. And they went back to Wilkes and swept that sweet street completely, and, and they didn't held any water since then. So cleaning the streets is the key. So sometime when you, we get these storms coming in forever, like this, we're going to last a couple of weeks, we need to be smart enough to have the streets cleaned first, and you won't have all this flooding problem. You can't stop the rain. And it's going to come down, but I mean, you could actually clean the streets, and I think it'd be a lot better. A couple of questions, uh, Popo, on Mahoney's, that Fields truck been sitting out there for the last several months. Are they actually going to do anything? They're supposed to be putting a restaurant in Mahoney's, excuse me, not Mahoney's, the uh, Magnolia Hotel. Magnolia Hotel had a, a problem with Zeta, and it actually split uh, some parts of it, and they're uh, working with their, their engineering group and, and insurance. Uh, they actually, was later, it was picked up off the pilings and sat back down. So I mean, it, it's more uh, to it than it just putting a roof on and so forth. So they are in, in the middle. We've had conversations with uh, uh, Jordan uh, about a week and a half ago. So they're trying to put the, the, uh, you know, the structures back together, but it really picked up and we feel like it was because of the wind focusing between our, the, uh, uh, Beaurevage in, in uh, Hard Rock. That was with the source of the, of the wind. But it did actually lift up off of uh, its uh, foundation and put back not so straight. But yeah, they're working on that. All right, that's good. Because I mean, that'd be, that's going to be nice in there. Yeah. Open that. That's a nice place for you. Yeah. They do, they do a great job. Yeah. Good restaurant. Yeah. The, the other thing, we had a uh, lot of ribbon cuttings this week. And I'll let uh, 
I don't hate to tell you about the one at Walmart, but we cut the one on Howard Avenue, two little businesses again. Mm-hmm. The business district on Howard Avenue is getting bigger and bigger. That's a good thing. They had the book signing at the CP Museum, uh, and they said it's the most books they ever sold at one of them signing at the CP Museum. And that's, uh, you know, what is a what is it really like, a contract worker with us? His wife, mm-hmm. he wrote the book in 1906 about the Crater and Oak. So it's, it's, a, it's pretty neat. It was night, nice. the bad weather, but a lot of people came anyway. And I know we had uh, the car show down there, and they did a great job Sunday. But, I mean, they got killed. You know, this weekend they have the Kobe okay. tournament and the boat show down there, so weather's supposed to be a lot better. So it's two good events. You know, once again, people looking for something to do. They want to get outside. They'll ride around in the rain. They'll ride anywhere. Huh. So that's a good thing. Where's Peter? How you buy it? Will you get my updates on these uh, projects we're working on, Peter? Better than the discussion this time. Get a mic. <laughs> we don't want you out there just talking to the world. Yeah, it's on it's on the desk of the decision maker, but the 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 time they have to redeem it is this August. They purchased the taxes uh, two years ago last August, so they can't take control of the property to give to us until this August. If we were going to try to do something before then, uh, it's it's in that lady's estate, so. Uh, they're going to look at it, and I think the numbers are going to make sense. But yeah. but they're they're cautious, I think. And about the sweatman house, did y'all get anything got, further with the state update. on that? I think the governor's actually going to come on the 23rd. Say again. The governor uh, uh, Tate Reeves is coming on the 23rd to actually uh, visit the, the house and talk about potentially what we can be done there. I, mean, I this think Friday, I believe, in the 23rd Friday. Yes. Mm-hmm. Councilman, just can I follow up on something that you asked sure. about earlier? I, I apologize for for not ask, saying this right away, but I was digging through the, the documents to try and find what I was looking for. Um, it's been noted, the Councilman Ward 7 has talked about this before, that the fact that we don't have enough vacuum trucks and when, when, the, uh, when, the leaves, when the leaves are falling, we just really have a tough time staying up. One of the things in your uh, routine agenda, you'll notice about $7,000 in rental costs for vacuum services. Just to show you that we, when, we, when, we, when we don't have enough trucks to get everywhere, we're, we're having the rent trucks. We'll, I think if I look, go back and look at how much we've paid over the, over the last couple of years, we can make a pretty good case for needing another truck. But that was $7,000 just this month for vacuum trucks, sort of additional to supplement ours. Well worth it. And how about the other thing? You find out about the flashing lights for the, the elementary schools and that. You said you're going to check on that to see where it was with the flashing lights, like for the nativity. Oh, yeah. I think uh, the flashing says, lights on Porter. Say again. I don't think we have. Billy Ray was going to. It's look not. Yeah, the, 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 it's not ordered yet. We haven't ordered one yet. Some of the equipment's coming in. I think Larry was talking about, you know, everything's back on, especially the flashing lights, you know, the turn signals. I think we're still waiting on a couple of the uh, turning lights, the arrows to come in, and, and uh, as well as any any of those things have been back ordered. And, uh, you know. Uh, we're getting, we're getting a lot of signals. Delivered. But we did get the pedestals for uh, uh, Point Cadet Marina. So yeah. those pieces of equipment are ready to be put in. Yeah, well, I was just talking about basically for the elementary schools and that, because that's something we definitely need. That's a safety issue. Light, yeah. That's a good thing. That's what I'm talking about for the yeah, I know light nativity, and I think uh, Felix has two in his ward okay. that needs those lights. So, I mean, that's just something we need to get done. Now, what you said, the problem, if they're not shipping them, they back order the what? Back order the lights, especially turn signals. You just can't get them in. I mean, we've got one right at, at uh, uh, Cobbett Street. Yeah, it, it actually, you know, Holds up trap once that one works and one doesn't. You don't know when to turn left or you know. so, and as well as things that happen on the beach you know, with regard to no turn signals off the beach because of the closing of the Fort Bayou Bridge. You can't turn, you don't have an arrow at Oak Street when you're turning off of Highway 90 to go uh, north. Anyway, yeah. that's not an equipment problem, that's an MDOT problem. Well, I can say that problem with stoplights, but I'm talking about flashing lights for the kids. Yeah. More than the stoplight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Dimon. Along the lines of the uh, vacuum trucks, 
I was going to wait till the budget session to talk about this, but street sweepers are another need. I mean, the debris that sits on the streets causes the water to puddle, which leads to increased deterioration or more rapid deterioration of our roads. What were you going to say, Mr. Mayor? A couple of thoughts along those lines with the vacuum truck as well as the street sweepers, which is all relates to, you know, storm drains and, and you know, quality of, of, of life kind of issues. As mentioned, uh, about 1.5 billion coming to the state of Mississippi for water, sewer, we hope storm drain too. So we don't you know our part, you know, uh, based on some sort of modified CDBG, but we want to make sure that storm drain, that was an MML was trying to qualify and we'll try to work up whatever our number is. Those are the two pieces of equipment and the, the services that they provide are, are high on our radar. So if we can buy three trucks or more sweep, sweepers and still work it into that you know, uh, that funding source, well, we will do that. So that is high on our radar. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Um, it, funny fact that I, I know that when it rains, if the, if the pipes are cleaner and the streets are cleaner, then it's easier to get rid of the water. But sometimes you can't fit so much water through one pipe. But the, the funny fact is, you know, that this month was the wettest month in the history of Gulfport, but only the fourth wettest month in the history of Biloxi. That's it could be fake news. You can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't get how Biloxi had three months wetter than Gulfport, but it is what it is. Um, Mike, we talked about the roads in Bluff Ridge and uh, or the bluffs on uh, Ravenwood and, and Bluff Ridge. Did we ever get with the, the street guys from the county and try to coordinate a meeting? We I have not ta I've not spoken to the county yet. We have paving money available. We 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 are. Uh, able to pave with, with or without yeah, your help. These roads are concrete roads. Yeah. Those, oh. And so that's, that's typically right. use a. And, and you know, talked to Connie, and she was okay with it prior to the election. Um, yeah. The last time, last time we did La Bontaire and um, Ben Oaks, I think a couple of years before that, mm -hmm. and the, our deal with the county, which I guess we'll ask them for again, is that they would uh, they did the demolition and we poured the new streets, we poured the new slabs. And you have to these concrete roads. We have to go selectively and figure out where they're failing and and, and patch, take whole sections out and replace whole sections. Right. I and think just, there's going to be an issue with the base. Of course, this is all set on wetlands, mm -hmm. and the way they're shifting the concrete is you can see where it's where it's shifted, and so it's probably going to be a, some restructuring of the base that's going to be required. But that's for people that are far more educated in that area than me to determine. But if you would um, reach out and see if we can get that scheduled a um, couple of questions on how things operate um, one of my residents has a security light it's, it's on the corner of linwood there's been numerous accidents and this is why he decided to pay for it because the city hadn't gotten a light up there is there any mechanism available for the city to take over the the responsibility of that light it's about a stoplight. No, it's a, it's a, uh, it's just a On the street. security light, a, a, a street light. Right. So that's, uh, that's the co-op, the, the co-op uh, north of the bay that does all the, we're talking, about, we're talking about north of the bay. Jerry mentioned about being on private property. I don't know okay. what, what we could do there, but we'll look into maybe replacing that light with one of our own okay. on our property. What's, our what's the name of the street, Councilman? Linwood, yeah. L-I-N-W-O-O-D. It's just off of Old Bay by the Pennzoil Park. Right. Let me try, uh, try to do what I did with Councilman Glavin last week. I, I gave him a map and had him go put the dot right on the map where they want the new light. And we turned that over to Coast Electric, and they put it right on their schedule right away. So okay. let me do the same thing for you, with you. Yep, sounds good. They can let you at least go back to, to the to let the resident let the resident show us where to put the light, so we're not guessing. Yep, sounds good. Uh, lastly, I'm going to send you an email. There's a, a a utility structure on on the green, and it's just near the road itself. It has some wood fencing around. It says in case of emergency, call City of Biloxi, and it, it's it's uh, a just wanted to know who's responsible for maintaining that fence around it. If it is a city's obligation, then it's, we need to and it's on on the green. Is it, it's on the road? Yeah, the street is the road called on, on the, the green. green. Yeah. Right, it's on the road called on the green. Well, the the answer is if it's it's a fence around one of our utility structures, i.e., 
a lift station or a well or whatever. Uh, it, it's our fence. Okay. So yeah. is, apparently there's something wrong with the fence? Yeah. Okay. Put it on the list. Well, that's my laundry list of to-dos. Appreciate it, Mr. Lawrence. I'm in. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, first, I would like to start by welcoming Carrie. It's first <laughs> day as our new clerk. Welcome. You. And then just echoing what everyone else said, I know when we had the amount of rain that we had, um, I'm sure that last Thursday was a nightmare for everybody like it was for me. Um, but I would like to commend our public works department, uh, Mike and his team did an excellent job. I was going from one side of the ward to the other on call, people calling me, and <clears throat> we were passing each other, and they were out, you know, unclogging ditches the best they could and things, and had some roads washed out. They were on top of that, getting that done um, as quick as possible, and so they did a great job, especially for the conditions. It was, we had some, I don't, I don't know that, you know, Robert said it's the fourth wettest day or month, fourth wettest, um, fourth but wettest I don't know that I've seen over, that short of a period of time between that Saturday and Thursday, that much rain ever. Um, but it was, it was really bad, so they did a great job. Um, thank everyone that came out to the ribbon cutting for the, uh, the new city center, new city center, um, and something that we were proud of out there to have. Appreciate everyone supporting that as well. Um, and other than that, um, that's about it. I. I was gonna, on the vacuum truck, is that something, I don't know the cost of, of one of those, is that something that if we don't get this this um, this COVID money, is it that something that we can possibly yes. get an extra one? If they do, we'll do it the same way we would do it. We would propose to do it the same way we did with the bucket truck this last year, okay. where we lease purchased it, so we Purchase spread it over it. a couple of years. Okay, good deal. That's all. We, That's all. we spread that bucket truck over three years, made a little pain, less pain. All right, Mr. Deming. Sorry, I, I slipped my mind. Um, Cafe Beignet, CB has the, the Jamaican place underneath. Now, the structure he's building on the back, can is it, is this, is he building a, a food truck garage? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. It's a, a screen for the trailer that that, that he's gonna that is cooking trailer. <coughs> to screen it from the street. Okay, I mean that's. It's not attached though, to the uh, historical structure. Wasn't to block it from the street. The cooking. I, I get that. I get that. I just, it's just it's, it sounds the same as what Tam was trying to do, but wasn't able to do. Um, when he wanted to use the, the trailer or the food truck to do the cooking and transport the food into the restaurant. Um, it's, how is this different? And it's just, look, it may be different. It may be something else that was wrong with Tan's plan. I don't know. Uh, but I just, when I was over there eating at Cafe Beignet, I saw all the construction going on, and it looked like they were building an area where you'd pull a food truck in and out. And so... I think uh, from the get-go, he had planned on cooking from outside anyhow. That, you know, from day one. It wasn't going to be... Peter can give you an update on, on what the logic was behind. Well, I don't know that we ever really had a plan from Tan other than he said he kind of what he wanted to do. Uh, and that was sort of in the, before we even had a food truck ordinance or any ordinances in place for food trucks. This is not technically a food truck. It's a trailer that, that will be coming in and out for cooking. And that's preferable than trying to set up a, a kitchen inside of that historic building and doing a lot of modifications to that building. So, um, He's already done a pretty significant amount of modifications to that first floor. To yeah, the first floor has already been uh, primarily, I mean, I think, I'm think i sure he's put over twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 in there, kind of restoring what was ripped out of there during the demo phase. Uh, from uh, CETA and or TAM, so uh, there's nothing, and Jerry can correct me on this, there's nothing uh, incorrect about if a restaurant wants to set up a, a cooking facility at the back of their property, they could do that Separate separately. 
And I think from a fire hazard standpoint, it's it's much safer anyway. So the problem you have, you got everybody else have to have a kitchen. So this guy don't have to have a kitchen. Well, he's got a prep kitchen, but it's oh, not a, a it's a not a oven kitchen. Truck. Not cooking the barbecue inside. He'd be out in that facility. I mean, that's not bad. That people built these fine kitchens and all these buildings. All you letting this guy do a truck? That's not right. Not I don't know about a rule from Jerry Creel or nothing. You can't be running a restaurant without no kitchen. I mean, come on. It's a barbecue facility. And you know, there are other restaurants that when you barbecue, they're going to be outside, won't be inside. And so that's yeah. what the, the pretty much the deal was. Well, that's a mistake you're making. You, uh, you penalize everybody around here has got kitchens and employees and people working in these kitchens. And if we don't have a rule, you don't have a kitchen, then we need to change that, Jerry. You should have been on top of that. What Mr. Brown said when he came before the AHRC to get approval for this is that the kind of food that he cooks generates so much smoke that you couldn't have customers in the same room with it while it was cooking. He had to move it to the outside. And AHRC considered that and also considered the fact that he would have to make, that the old library is a historic structure. And when you start having to add gigantic vents to the outside of it, that's gonna take away from the historical significance of the building. Um, you know, we've, we've heard some criticism about him um, being able to operate out of a trailer. He will have to have health department approval on the trailer to, to cook there, just like anyone else. But the difference between this just being a trailer pulling up behind somewhere and cooking and a restaurant is that he has rented a permanent presence in downtown. So this is not the same thing as just a trailer pulling up to cook to compete with other, other restaurants in downtown. Not about as weak as I've ever heard anything you ever said, Jerry. Well, the, that is terrible. About smoke in the room and stuff like that. I mean, come on, give me a break. You supposed to be serving people food in a restaurant with a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the brother just going to open up a building and I'll put a truck behind it. I mean, that's, uh, it, that's, that's not right to these people that put in these night kitchens, serve a lot of food. This is not the city. This is a human state the city's making. Mm -hmm. And historical, that thing done. There's nothing historical left about that building, period. Other than it's just still standing there. It, it's still on the register. And yeah, it's still on the record. Yeah. All, yeah, I know that. Song and dance for that routine. But that's terrible. So anyway, that's, that's, that's going to come back and get us, I'm telling you. Ask Mr. The man that deals with this stuff. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, I got a question because I've heard num numerous things and I just want to clear the air. Is he, does he have his own temporary power or is he using the power from the, from the, from the building that is on the existing tenants meter? Yeah, does he have a separate meter that he's using? It's not a separate meter. So who's paying that power bill or, or those utilities that he's using right now? The, the, the tenant is paying it in accordance with her lease. So he's using power to build and do some stuff right now and, and she's paying that? Correct. Is that fair? Yes, I'm pr <laughs> as far as what he's building using power you know, for a for a power cord or a power tool? I mean, I know, I know any, any, any power that she's paying is if it's on, uh, if he's using it, is that fair? The lease says that, that he will reimburse or share in any power bills, even if they were going to share a meter, uh, they're going to have to work out some arrangement of that. And uh, that's the first I've heard of that, that she had a problem with the power tool. So, but But the lease does provide that power will be Split, I think he um, may be paying the cost to split the meter out. So I think that may, I don't know for sure, but I'll check on that. And, and does his lease say the same thing or just her lease says that? I think they both say that because she had, she originally had the whole building. We've had to redo her lease at least four times, so. Okay. There's no further discussion. We'll now move to citizen comments. <clears throat> we'll have a total allotted time of 45 minutes. When you come forward, if you will, please state your name and sign in on the sign-in sheet at the table. 
Is there anyone on my left side of the room and your right side of the room that would like to speak? My left side, your right side. All right, my right side, your left side. Please state your name and sign in. Right there, on top, on, under the glass. Under the glass. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm coming to introduce myself. My name is Gilbert Ramsey. I'm a military veterans outreach specialist in the community, internationally recognized for this opportunity. What I'm introducing is a research development opportunity for the internship for the students. What I'm doing is recognizing economic development opportunity. And what we're doing is looking at research development for an initiative to accommodate, accommodate amenities for loved ones and caretakers. What we're doing is retrofitting the boats and mud buggies to accommodate for nature observation and joy fishing included. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at property on Ponce Ferry Road next to Kennedy Diesel from the ba Baptist Church all the way over Kennedy Diesel. I reached out to Mr. Tommy Kennedy to introduce it appropriately. I recognize um, the Kennedys um, donated the property for the Baptist Church back in the day. So what I'm doing is I have a nonprofit organization fixed to be implemented, um, Veteran Bottle Water Company. I'm waiting on a website description. And I've already got everything associated appropriately. Um, I got it packaged and everything. And it's a nonprofit organization for a profit. But what I'm doing is I'm utilizing them, them, um, that money to accommodate Gomesia funds. Gomesia funds for 32 acres on the bay. And what I'm doing is I just introduced up with General Joe Spragg this morning. And they'll be accommodated in June. So what I'm doing is making sure it's implemented with our capabilities in the community for education, recreation, employment, to facilitate it appropriately for, for physically impaired citizens. So I look at this with research development opportunities. And when I mean research development opportunities, I mean Honda. Honda, we're looking at this because there's an organization called um, American Research Development with Honda. And they only have five locations throughout the United States, nothing south. So I'm gonna recognize it for the Mississippi Initiative and with uh, Mr. Jamie Miller and everybody. So I'm coming at this with um, also um, Senator Roger Wicker initially with Amtrak. Amtrak, another thing I'm doing with Red Cross. So all this is on my head and heart, ladies and gentlemen. I'm coming at y'all with this initiative because I have a commercials and everybody to help me out with this opportunity. So I have this to make sure that we can recognize this opportunity within our organization, within our community. When I mean our community, I'm representing the state of Mississippi. I can go anywhere in the world. I've been offered everywhere because of my networking capabilities. So here we go to make sure that we come forth that location. I know everybody knows that gentleman, and I know what I'm doing. I'm having this opportunity because quality of life initiative and enhanced recreation opportunities and amenities for loved ones and caretakers for education, recreation, employment, and facilitating appropriately. When I mean this, I mean this because I'm very passionate what I'm doing. General Jeff Hammond, General Joe Spragans, Colonel Dick Wilson, and Senator Roger Wicker. They all know me. I'm not here to just mislead you. I'm here to inspire you and challenge you. Mr. Ramsey, your time to is up. And this, here we go. And thank you much for your time, and you have a blessed day. Is there anyone else on the right side of the room that would like to speak? My right, your left. Anyone in the back that would like to speak? If not, citizens' comments are now closed. We'll now move to policy agenda. Ordinance to amend the land development ordinance to clarify where short-term rentals and timeshares are allowed and to correct sections of ordinance for the new specific standards. So I'll move it. All right, and that's the first reading. We'll move to the next item.
Resolution denying a request for a zoning map amendment to change the zoning classification for a parcel of land presently zoned planned development residential to RS75 medium single family residential for property currently identified as 13539 Lorraine Road. I'll make the motion. Any discussion? This is on item B, correct? Correct. Um, I was reading through that. As, as I recall, there's a phase one and a phase two, and this concerns phase two? Yes, but it's, it's <laughs> originally there was a phase one and two, and then right. the person that developed phase one is no longer involved. So this really is connected in no way other than it was, it's on the property that originally was going to be phase two of Bellawood. Correct, and, and this involves a greater use of Virginia Lee Road? Correct, Sorry, and Mr. Quill can explain okay. the, the issues that. When this, uh, when this project originally came before us as a, a PDR several years ago, there were two phases involved. And the overall plan was that phase one and phase two would be connected. The main entrances would come off of Lorraine Road. And there would be a secondary entrance that would come in off of Virginia Lee, but that would only be for emergency purposes. That would be with a Knox box on that side. Phase one was uh, started and has been built out. And what this is is a proposal to finish to uh, start and complete phase two, but there have been significant changes to phase two. Uh, and we have some drawings, if you would like to see them, that we can put on the screen. But what's happened is, is that the connection from uh, phase, the bridge that was going to be put in to connect phase one and phase two has been eliminated. So these are now two separate independent proposals going on. They are going to be adding some more houses to uh, phase one to that side of the creek, but then the project calls now for another main entrance coming in off of Virginia Lee Road that will have 26 or 27 lots coming in off that side where the only access to those lots is to come in off of Virginia Lee Road, which is very narrow, which uh, is would barely be able for one of our fire trucks to be able to get through. But what happens is, is that by removing that bridge and having these two disconnected, it also eliminates the fire department requirement that you have two remote exits to be able to get to the entire project. So you would have access coming in off Lorraine, you'd have access coming in off of Virginia Leap, but no cross access for fire department or other emergency access. So. That's the, the biggest difference in the two is that they essentially redesigned phase two and it doesn't match up with what was proposed before. Uh, I believe that the reason that many of the, the people who live on Virginia Lee was agreeable to the overall PDR in the beginning was because that they knew that their road would only be used for emergency purposes. But if this is approved, then it would provide access there for many of the houses. In addition to that, Virginia Lee is one of those roads that um, at one point was a private road and whether this county took it or we took it, but it's very narrow. There are no easements at all, so there's no way to even improve that road, um, you know, without some type of eminent domain or something. So unless this guy comes in and builds a bridge, and, and I sat down and discussed with him, uh, you know, there's really nothing that can be done in the form of a subdivision on that property mm -hmm. without a bridge or buying up additional property that gets him an ingress or egress to a, um, a main road. That's correct, yes. What was his response to building a bridge? Uh, the cost factor, it, it would just, there's, it there's, would eliminate any profit from the subdivision. Right, there's, there's, the cost of it they're not gonna be generating enough lots and housing in phase two that would offset the cost of building this bridge because this is a major drainage area that runs through this uh, this property that we're talking about. Yeah, and, and that's a that's ultimately I talked to the original engineer 
um, on this project mm -hmm. that um, the de that developed the first phase, and he said that's why the owner the, or the the person who developed and built out the the first phase basically build on the second phase is because the cost factor far outweighed um, you know any any mm -hmm. realization of profits. So what are you actually denying here? We're den He's requesting approval for phase two, and the planning commission. Uh, because of the changes that were involved, didn't feel that phase two was designed appropriately. So they denied it. That's what I wanted to make sure we had that right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. So we have a first and a second. Is there any other discussion? All right. If not, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Seven zero. Oh, I'm sorry. I was waiting for the next item. We'll now move to the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We had a first. Second was Mr. Tisdale. Start over there. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, but a couple of things on, on B. With the contract, would give the, everything the same prices and everything as it was before. Yeah. So just you just yeah. redoing hours. it. Yeah. Okay. Just checking on that one. And this one here on C, we're going back to Katrina. It says that's the, connected with the Hurricane Katrina. The um, is Walt in there? Sure. You want to take it? This is. In other words, it's part of the infrastructure project, and this is uh, the a &E firm that designed that particular section, and we've asked, we're asked them to go back in and help us uh, look at the driveways and some of the other little issues, as well as uh, the issues on Graham. You got, you want to take that? Well, I don't, I don't really know Graham. Yes. Um, so. Brown Mitchell's going to look, as uh, Mike said, on uh, some driveways and sidewalks on Querens. We have a couple of spot locations on some of our infrastructure projects where the design works very well, but in other areas, the driveways are uh, maybe a little bit too steep. So we're going back and look at some of those. It's not uh, throughout all the project sites, but there are spots and locations we're going to need to uh, correct. And this just happens to be one of them. But it is all be built against Katrina? We are definitely going to bill it against Katrina and seek uh, MEMA's approval for reimbursement. Right. And we, uh, you rented the Johnson diesel place? Yeah. And at the, what is that? So we have inside storage? Yeah. Uh, again, what we're doing is enabling, I think uh, we talked with a couple of council and about what the idea was. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club wants to, uh, and, and rightfully so, we've got a number of uh, emergency vehicles and uh, uh, public works um, items stored in that building that went underwater during Katrina behind Nichols High School or Nichols uh, School. So they will renovate that spot, and we're going to have to move, you know, the uh, Humvees and heavy duty stuff, as well as some other opportunities that uh, things are stored throughout the city at water uh, towers and these other things. So we're leasing that building. Uh, for a couple of years, and so those, you know, um, those are vehicles will be moved to uh, Johnson Diesel, and you know, if we're lucky enough to build some buildings, we'll at least we'll, we'll go away. Uh, but uh, that's not a piece of property. Big yeah, it's a great piece of property. Yeah, good piece of property. All right, thank you. All right. On that Johnson Diesel building, how many square feet roughly is that? Do you know? Twenty something thousand, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, is it bigger than it's, it, it's uh, twice the size of the building. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, twenty something thousand, I believe. Okay. I just want to be sure that if there's any drug, I don't know if any drug forfeiture money was tied up in the renovation of that or any uh, community it's development block grant money, but we're clear on that. We're I just don't want to be in a position where we've got to reimburse the, right. the feds for either of those programs. We're clear on that. 
We good on that? I think that was one of the first things that was did, checked Jack. into uh, when that when that talks initiated in that area. Yeah, we've we've looked at that. We know under state under state forfeiture, it would not be any kind of an issue. It's if what the purpose was used for at the time was law enforcement, uh, it's sufficient. It's common to dispose of property in the future. Uh, the what we're doing here is actually expanding the size of the storage area and we're taking, this money would be paid for the, from the general fund to store these vehicles. So if it became an issue, and I think it's about 25 or 30,000 of that renovation was federal drug forfeiture. If it became an issue, our first position would be we're taking general fund money and we're using that to buy a bigger storage facility. And I. I think with the Boys and Girls Club, there is also uh, some drug education component, which may not fit perfectly within the federal drug forfeiture guidelines, but it, it's not like we're going out and just flipping a building or something like that and, and doing it. So I, I think overall we're fine. It's actually part of the, the schools. We have a lease from the schools. Right. We would pass that to the, to the uh, Boys and Girls Club. I, ju I just want to be sure we're not having to yeah. reimburse the feds anywhere along the line for something <laughs> that they might determine, you know, isn't appropriate or within their guidelines. And I know the time issue, you know, how, how, long, how long might some of those restrictions apply? They don't apply forever, of course, right. but it sometimes but there may be, i don't know if there's a particular amount of time or anything i just want to be again i just want to be sure we're not in the position where we got to reimburse the feds i've looked and been looking and i cannot find any specific date i really can't find any specific thing addressing it under the state ag opinion it's very clear that this is acceptable okay. but as far no. as the federal i just have not been able to find anything. that's good thank you Is there anything else, Mr. Tisdale? All right, Ms. Newman? Mr. Glavin? Nothing. Mr. Gines? Yeah, I just wanted to add to Dr. Tisdale. I think the time did elapse on that because when we checked on it initially, uh, there was a time frame on it and the time did elapse. So that's the only comment that I had on. Okay, thank you. Mr. Deming? I have. Yeah, I have nothing as well. Is there any exemptions or? All right, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Seven zero. We'll now move to code enforcement hearings. Item A and B are both side by side on Oak Street, 338 Oak, 334 Oak, SC Brosh on A, and Stephen Carl Brosh Jr. on B. And this was a 30 day extension granted for both properties, and they're still in violation. I like to extend it for 30 days. It's probably been out of the water that sinks all the time. It's having a hard time moving those things. So, Let's see if we get it done. If he drives out and he moves his stuff. And should have good weather by then. I'll say to move it. If you don't, then, then we'll get on it. Okay. All in favor? I have a first by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Tisdale, 7 0. All right. Yes, That's combined. Right. We'll now move to the routine agenda. I have a motion? So moved. Okay, I have a first by Mr. Tisdale, a second by Mr. Gines. Is there any discussion? One point three. Okay. <laughs> no discussion? Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, we need uh, the sixty two. Six point two million. We got money in the bank. One point three. Six. Oh. <laughs> yeah, six point two million. We got to pay out. But how about money we got coming in? 
We got 1.3 coming in, I think, right? More, more than that. We better. We, uh, we were originally supposed to have 1.31 million coming in. Uh, we asked the, the MEMA staff, the local staff here, Diane Sayer, Marlon Seal, and their accountant group, uh, because we had so much going out, this dock at 2.9 million. They went back and looked, and uh, we'll have 3.1 million coming in. We should have it by the second or third week of May. So they did a really good job of bumping that up, making sure we're staying uh, well in advance, 60 days in advance. Well, the 3.1 coming in, that has anything to do with the 1.2 and the 2.9? No. So that's all different money. Yeah. 2.9 2. is what we're paying out, but the, the 3.1 is just keep us 60 days in advance. So they, they see how much we're putting out, and they're just making sure we're always ahead. There was about, a, a, as far as trap funds, there was about a million in closing uh, uh, that was sitting still up there. I think we still, we still in question. That's still the argument, yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, we are staying on pretty good, getting the money in. Yeah, the the 60 good. days was a great, you know, was a great solution to our problems back in 2015 and 16, and, and we, you know, they, they've kept up with it, and, uh, uh, and, and we, you know, I pressed Walt to make sure that we all we stay 60 days ahead. Often, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Call for the question. All in favor? Seven zero. I have a motion to recess. Okay. Right, adjourn. That's it. Adjourn. 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 Okay, I need to vote. Uh, we have a first by Lawrence, second by Robert. Robert, all in favor? 7-0. <laughs>